Barista, in the classroom, we might have talked about shades of meaning when you were there. I cannot remember, but here's what it looks like. It's basically when you look at a word, Andrew, a word like happy, but there's different levels of happiness. Like you can be a little happy or you can be very happy. And that's what shades of meaning is. If, you, if you're more than just happy, you're glad. So it grows in intensity. Happy, glad, joyful, merry, delighted, and elated. So here, you're a little happy. Maybe you're happy because you finished your homework. But down here, you are elated because your mom is having a surprise birthday party for you. Here, you are feeling elated, super, super happy. And authors use shades of meaning to convey their writing better. So, Marissa, today, Marissa, are you feeling happy or are you feeling super happy? I'm feeling a little happy. Just would you just say you're here happy or you're over here somewhere? I'm just a little happy. The first one. Yeah, just the first one. Good. I like that. Maybe this is a little a better example. Let's ask Andrew. Sad. Sometimes you are sad because maybe you want to go outside and play and your mom said no. But if your best friend is outside and your best friend has a toy and you want to play with him outside and your mom didn't let you go, maybe you get upset. But let's say that your best friend is outside playing with a new toy and your two other best friends are outside. Now you're going to be gloomy. You're not just sad anymore. You're not just upset anymore. Now you're going to get gloomy. Maybe you're even going to get somber. And when you're really upset because everybody's outside doing something super fun and you're watching them through the window, maybe now you're feeling a little bit. That's true. Depressed. Right? My mom, my mom won't let me walk alone because she thinks that like, somebody's going to kidnap me. And how does that make you feel? Well, a little upset. Yeah, maybe some here, maybe here, a little upset, right? right there. But imagine if something did happen to you, Marissa, that was harmful, where do you think your mom would be? Would she be sad? Would she be upset? Would she be gloomy, somber, or depressed? She would be scared and sad. I think she would be over here somewhere, right? Super depressed if something terrible happened to you. Yeah. And we don't want that for your mom, right? So shades of meaning is helpful for us to understand the intensity of our feelings. How intense are our feelings? Sometimes, Andrew, when you get upset, like really, really upset, you get a little bit hotter. And upset can be different. Upset is like when you're mad, but it can also be like when you're sad. It has more than one meaning. Do you have questions, Andrew? Because you're looking at that very closely. Okay. Okay. A little and happy, guess. Today, are you happy, Andrew? Today, are you happy or are you sad? A uh, little happy. Little happy? Are you really, really happy, like over here, like Mary, feeling super joyful? What about a little happy? I want to get a little happy. I think I'm feeling right here because it's Friday afternoon. And as soon as I'm done working, I'm gonna go watch a movie. Remember that Disney movie, Andrew? I think I'm gonna go watch. So I'm kind of feeling delighted that I get to rest for a little while. All right, guys, thank you for hanging in there because these are good examples of shades of meaning. There's a reason why I showed you this and I'm gonna show it to you when we start reading, okay? Let's begin with our reading. Marissa, we read a little bit before you joined us. Are you gonna read out of your book? Eh, yeah. Okay, so we're in chapter four. Yeah. And Andrew is going to start reading for us. 
Andrew, can you go ahead and let me make this bigger so you can see it? And the name is Sistine, Andrew. Remember, the little girl's name is Sistine. Can you go ahead and start yeah. reading? With a lazy dress. Her lazy dress. Very good. Good memory. Okay. Sistine. I can't see. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew, thank you for telling me. <laughs> Silly Miss Franco. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, me. What am I supposed to do? You're going to read. Say 16. 16? Does he not see it? Hmm. Andrew, do you see it? Sorry, it doesn't look like he's seeing it. So, okay. Do you need it bigger? No, no. Wait, wait, what are we looking at? At the screen. Does he see chapter four? Yes, it shows right there. He just doesn't know where he's oh. like starting. At the so very I'm beginning. Over here, Andrew. Okay. Sistine. Sistine. I think Mike says reading. Um, no, it's Andrew's turn. Oh, okay, go Andrew. Sistine was in Roth, sixth grade, home room, class. Mrs. Miss Soames. Miss Soames made her her. Stand up, stand up, and introduce, introduce herself. Herself. My name, my name, she in her friendly voice is, is silly. Sistine. Sistine. And just start straight through the same. Lily Bailey. Bailey. She stood. Stood. Bailey. Stood at the full front, front of the room in her pink dress, and all the kids stare, stare at her with open mouths. No, as if try to read more faster. She had just stepped up, stepped, stepped up a spaceship. spaceship. Come on, focus. That's okay. I'll finish for him. And all the kids stared at her with open mouths, as if she had just stepped off a spaceship from no. another planet. You guys, why do you think that they're staring at her with open mouths? They're like going, why do you think they're doing that? What do you think? Yes. What would we, what would be some reasons why someone stares at you in class? Do you think Andrew? Any ideas, Marissa? What do you think? Mm. It's her first day. Going to school. Mm -hmm. It's her first day at that school. She looks pretty. Yes. She, what is she wearing? The lazy dress. The lazy dress. The lazy dress. Marissa, do girls wear pink lacy dresses to school? Well, no. Not some, really. Some girls wear it in the party. Some girls wear it at school. Yes. But well, probably they not to school. They want. I they think your sister's in middle school. Your sister's in middle school, right? High no, school. she's in high school. Well, last year, I think she was in middle school. Eighth grade? No. No? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your name, your name again? My name is Sarah. Sarah. If somebody, if one of your classmates had worn a pink lacy dress to school, how do you think other people would look at 
at her? I mean, it depends on the way she looks and her like style. Oh, so they would wear that like just on a regular day? I mean, if you keep wearing that regularly, like people are gonna find it weird. Uh -huh. and, and some some might like it and some might just be like confused on why she's wearing it a lot. Yeah. So yeah, kind of like the way they're looking at her now. Like the like she stay, stepped off a spaceship from another planet. Okay. All right. Rob looked down at his desk. He knew not to stare at her. He started working on a drawing of the tiger. Okay, Marissa, your turn. Okay. Which part? What a lovely name. Okay, we heard it. I don't see. It begins with a W. Look at my, oh, I lost it. Look at my screen. I lost it now. Oh, uh, right here. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> there we go. It's the, like, the middle of the oh, page. What a lovely name, said Mrs. Stone. <laughs> Thank you, said Mrs. Wait. What's your name? Remember, Sistine. Two syllables. Sistine. 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 Chris Wilkin, Wilkins. Wilkins. Who sat in front of Rob? Storn. Snorted. 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 And, and then giggled. And the cover. <laughs> I'm from. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Sistine said, home of the live liberty. <laughs> and I hate the so south because, south because the people in in it are ignore ignorant ignorant and i'm not staying here in lister my father is coming to get me next week she looked around the room defiantly Sarah. Look. Are you okay, Andrew? Yeah, Andrew. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm going to read part of it so we can get done quicker. Well, said Mrs. Soames, thank you very much for introducing yourself, Sistine Bailey. You may take your seat before you put your mouth in your, before you put your foot in your mouth any further. Does anybody have an idea what the author means by that? Before you put your foot in your mouth any further? No, sometimes that happens if we say the wrong thing. It's an expression. Andrew, are you okay? Are you okay? No, it's just me. All right, uh, Marissa, can you read the next paragraph? The whole class. Okay, where? Right here. Second paragraph. The whole, the whole class. class laugh at it, at that. Rob looked up just as Sistine sat down. She glowered at him. She glared at him. I want to talk she about that word, Marissa. I want to talk about that word, glared. What's she, a glare? Yep, that's why I want to talk about it. Look right here. What does that say? Uh, look. Look. Are oh, you looking, look? Andrew? But it's not just look. What's after look? Frown. Can you guys frown? Andrew, show me a frown. Do you know how to frown? 
when Ms. Franco says, today we're gonna read 1,000 pages. You might be like, you see that? Like, really? That's a frown. You don't wanna do that, right? And then after a frown, like this, it has to do like, look at my right here. Like, what are you talking about, Miss Franco? I'm not going to read 100 pages, right? A frown of disapproval. After that, Marissa, what is that word? Stare. A stare. The author uses that word a lot. She uses the word stare. That's a little bit like when you look at someone with a stare, you might look a little upset. After that look comes a scowl when you're upset and angry because Ms. Franco says you have to read 1,000 pages. But then when you get really upset, now it's a glare. So when you're upset and you're looking, you're looking at someone and you're very upset, it's a glare. Marissa, can you think of a time when you glared at someone? I don't know. So it's when you looked at someone, you looked at someone and you were very upset. Remember that word upset? You looked at someone and you were very upset. That is a glare. Can you remember the last time you were very upset? I don't know. You don't know? Hmm. I'm thinking about a time when I was very upset. Glare is a look. Let's go back to what she said. Can you reread that paragraph? The whole class laughed at that. Okay. At him. Then she stuck her tongue out at him. Him. He shook his head and went back to his drawing. So Sistine is really upset at Rob. The, the class laughed at her. Rob looked at her and then she gave him the dirtiest look. That's a glare, Marissa. Why is she mad at Rob? What did he do? He didn't even laugh. Exactly. He didn't do anything, but it, maybe she wasn't mad at him. Maybe she was very upset because the entire class laughed at her. Right? Would you be upset if the class laughed at you? I would just be upset. Well, she was very yes. upset. And Miss, you know I did. What? Well, whatever class make it fun of me, I would just say I will go to the restroom and I will be just be mad. Yeah. That's a good way to and, handle it. And I, I won't calm myself. Whatever people are making fun of me, I get really mad and I really want to do something, but yeah. I can't do it. Good for you. You know how to control yourself then. But sometimes we can't help feeling strong emotions about something, right? We still have strong feelings, but good for you for knowing how to control yourself. Okay, Andrew, I'm going to ask you to read the next paragraph because I know you can read this paragraph, Andrew. Right here, look. He sketched. Your turn, Andrew. Right here where I'm pointing. Your turn to read because I know Marissa is going to be impressed when you read this. Am I sharing? I'm not sharing, huh? No, you're not. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, here we go, Andrew. He sketched. Out the tiger. But what? What? Bless you. Bless you. But what he? What he? When it wanted, wanted to do was little. It in would his manner have shown, shown, shown him how to whittle, how to talk, 
take a, a person of wood, piece. piece of wood and make a come alive. Andrew, thank you. That was very good. Andrew, can you tell Marissa what it means to whittle? What is whittle? To carve something. Carve, Andrew, make carve it. Oh, you remember to carve something. Should we show Marissa what it means? Yeah, it means. Yeah. Let's show Marissa what whittle is. I think she would appreciate knowing what whittle is because Rob likes to whittle. Marissa, are you seeing the screen? Yeah. Okay, Wait. so you see these tools on the table? Yeah. They use those okay. tools. From there, you can move on to make all sorts of different projects, whatever you think um, you'd like to work on. It's a Whittling is a great hobby to have, especially if you're outdoors, like camping or something, because then you don't have to worry about cleanup of all these shaved. He's using those tools, and now he's going to show some of the projects um, he's made. And then it's good to coat it in something like flaxseed oil. Uh, to get done with that, you can start working on things that simply try to carve. Ball. So why would it be? to work on, especially if you want to paint them after. So the things that he's holding, those figurines, he carved those out with his tools. It's called oh, whittling. That's whittle? Yeah. And that's what Rob from the book, remember Rob is only like 12 years old and he whittles, he does that. Oh. Isn't that amazing? And so he's gonna do that with the tiger. Remember the tiger that they found in the woods? Yeah. Yep, that's whittling. Okay, you guys. We are going to wrap it up. But Marissa, since you have the book, I would like for you to finish reading the book by yourself. But Maybe. there's one last thing that I want to show you. Yes, Marissa. Never mind. I want to leave you with this image. Let me share my screen. So just a quick recap of what we read. They're in the classroom. It's Sistine's first day. She's wearing the pink lacy dress. And here's the students looking at her with their mouths dropped open. Miss, that's weird. It's weird, I know. And then here's the next image. This is Rob. He likes to, what do we call it? Whittle. He likes to whittle. And today, Andrew learned how to read the L-E at the end, whittle. And that's an example of whittling. And these are some things that you can create when you whittle. And then the last image I want to leave with you is Sistine. Sistine is feisty. She's sassy. And we're just getting to... Do you have any questions, Andrew? Marissa, any questions?